Hey guys, welcome back. Now, if you own a VPN or you're just looking to get yourself one, but you're not exactly sure how to use one and wondering if it's a complicated issue. Well, so that's why I'm here to tell you that it really isn't. And all you really need to do is download and install one of these VPNs. And after you fully install them, all you have to do is use your credentials to log into the applications. And of course, if you want to grab an exclusive discount, you can use the links in the description down below. And after that, you can just click one single button in the case of ExpressVPN to connect to a server. However, when it comes to NordVPN, you can just kind of zoom into the map and pick a server. And then with Surfshark, you have a list, even though you still have a list with Nord and Express, um, but that's basically it. Now, if you want to make sure that you're connected to the right server, so basically what you're gonna need to do is simply go over to any IP finder and it'll tell you your IP address. So this is how you can make sure you're connected to the right one. So I was just connected to the French IP address right here on the French server. And if let's just say I switch, for example, to the American one, maybe connect to the Dallas server. And so the moment I'm connected, I could just give the website a quick refresh and it'll basically change my IP address as it recognizes that I am in Dallas, Texas instead of France. And so basically that's how you can take your own little virtual holiday. And so I have access to everything from Dallas right now and it'll make it look like I'm in the United States myself, even though I'm not. So if there are any streaming services I'd like to access that are exclusive to the United States, this is how I can access them super easily. Now, there are a couple of things that you should keep in mind, and there are also a couple of features which I'll talk about in just a few seconds. So for starters, they have the kill switch and a couple of protocols and split tunneling. So now when it comes to protocols, you can stick to automatic or the fastest one. So that'll be the lightweight UDP with Express. And then for NordVPN, that would be the Nordlynx. And then for Surfshark with the WireGuard protocol. Okay, so now what the kill switch will do, it'll stop your internet connection if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So I just want you guys to understand what this is for. Okay, and so basically, it makes sure that you're only going to be connected to the internet while you're secured by the VPN tunnel. Otherwise, it'll disconnect you from the internet, preventing any rare leaks. And then we have split tunneling, which will allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which ones are not. So let's just say if you don't want your entire computer or device to be affected by the VPN connection, you can use split tunneling. So I don't really use it too much unless let's just say, for example, I'm torrenting or maybe I want want to access a specific website on Google Chrome. However, I don't want any clients to be affected by the VPN, so that's why I use split tunneling. And it's also a very nice feature to have. Now, I like to use ExpressVPN. Since you know how these features work, you can just go ahead and let's just say you want to access some sort of German or Netherlands-based server, you can just connect to one of these and then you'll be good to go. So for example, if I head on back to my IP address finder and go ahead and refresh, you'll see that I'm in Amsterdam. And so it's really as simple as that. Now, how do you know which one of these VPNs could be the best choice for you? So let's talk a little bit more about that to help you guys make a more informed decision. And so I've been testing out some of the most popular VPNs out there and I've narrowed them down to ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and Surfshark as my top three picks overall. Now, all three VPNs work remarkably well with streaming services. They provide some of the best speeds, they're very easy to use, and they also have the necessary security features, such as a kill switch, split tunneling, and a bunch of protocols. But of course, they still vary in what features they offer and how much they cost. And picking out the best service for you will depend on what you're looking for in a VPN. So let me break down each service individually to help you make a more informed decision. First up, we have ExpressVPN, which is overall the best pick as it came first in most major categories like speed, security, and privacy. Now, in terms of reliability, ExpressVPN has proven its commitment to protecting user data several times by conducting many audits over the years. On top of going through a real-life stress test where the Turkish government sees one of its servers in an ongoing investigation, only to find nothing that could be linked to any specific user. Now, other than that, ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 105 countries, allowing you to access almost any content from all around the world. 
But what's so impressive about these servers is their consistency and reliability. Whether I'm streaming, gaming, or torrenting, I've had great speeds and uninterrupted connections. And besides being super simple to use, my favorite thing about ExpressVPN is how responsive it is across all devices. Launching the app only takes a few seconds and connecting to any server takes a single second or less, which isn't something that I can say about any other VPN. And so if you're looking for the overall best, fastest, and most reliable VPN out there, ExpressVPN is your go-to. Next up, we have NordVPN, which offers the most value for money out of the three options. It's got some bonus features that make it a little bit more than just a simple VPN. Such features include threat protection, which blocks ads and malware-ridden websites, and also protects your device from harmful files. And in terms of speeds, NordVPN actually rivals ExpressVPN, especially when it comes to gaming and overall performance. Although it's got over 5,800 servers in 60 countries, so 45 less countries, which means access to less content than Express, but more servers will mean that the user base is more widely spread across the servers, so basically more room for everyone to use. And another thing I really liked about NordVPN is its intuitive user interface, which has a huge map of all of its servers, allowing you to pick and choose the closest server to you with a couple of clicks. And when it comes to device limits, NordVPN allows you to protect up to six devices with one subscription. And finally, we have Surfshark, which is gonna be the best budget VPN on this list. Because unlike ExpressVPN and NordVPN, Surfshark allows you to protect an unlimited number of devices under one subscription, which is great for households and businesses. Now, it might not be as fast as these two, but it offers the essential VPN features on top of some bonus ones, like an ad blocker, two type of specialty servers, as well as no borders mode and rotating IP, which can be very useful in restrictive countries. Not only that, but it offers a huge server list of over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, which gives it a lot of value. And so if you're looking for the best budget VPN that allows unlimited simultaneous connections on top of having the core features of a VPN, Surfshark is your go-to. So to sum it up, if you're looking for the overall best, fastest, and most reliable service with arguably the best privacy policy out there, ExpressVPN is easily your go-to option. NordVPN is going to be the one to get if you're looking for a well-rounded VPN that offers bonus features while maintaining great performance and security for a reasonable price. And finally, we have Surfshark, which is the best budget VPN as it allows for unlimited connections and it offers the core features of a premium VPN at the cheapest possible cost. And again, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. And just out of curiosity, I actually spoke with Express, and they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending more money on the monthly renewals than they would have with the yearly plan. Because basically what happens is, that people renew monthly thinking, you know, I don't need it long term. But unfortunately, they end up spending more money than they would have going with a yearly plan, especially with a discount code we provided below. So really, if you know you're not going to need Express for longer than a month, then you should definitely go for the month plan. But if there's any chance that you might end up using it longer than a month, you might want to go with the yearly plan. And then if you change your mind or, you know, realize that you don't need it that long at the end, you can always get a refund and go back to just a month at a time plan. And so that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.